But they went from that whole like tension of like, oh, Poe's missing, the robot's missing. Like, how the hell is Kirito and Asuna gonna get back with their if they're stuck there two hundred plus years? And then they they went from that to this. I was like, oh, everything's okay. Just delete my two hundred years of memory. <laughs> oh, he's the first human ever to survive two hundred years of memories. Oh, we got this AI bot for Alice now. Everything's gonna be all right. You know, blah blah blah. Like now we gotta save Underworld. It's like, where is all this coming from? You know, like. Oh, I, I just don't get it. And there's only one episode left. <laughs> so how are you gonna like how are you gonna be able to like close this? You know? Doesn't Fucking A dude. Doesn't matter, oh, man. Oh Author God. just rolling in the money. Uh. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast, week 11 of the, 20, uh, the summer 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello. Next up, we have Ku. Hello. And finally, we have Sasha. Stray dog. <laughs> Who is it? Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so we don't have like, any anime news. Uh, for this week so we're gonna jump right into our shows and then we also discuss um got a high school last week because we recorded on a monday and that episode already aired so you want to listen to our thoughts on that we had that in the previous episode so we're just jump ahead right ahead to fire force um so this i'll tell you this what's start like this is i guess starting a new arc um we're basically learning more about the lore of the world i actually like how this episode we focus more on on victor and kind of his character i I like how there's more to him than just like, cause I always thought him as sketchy, but I think I actually like his, his um, his reasons for the things he do. Like I think it's it's pretty legit how like he's he's so distrustful of all the things that happen, which we've learned that like, you know, you can't trust the church, so you might as well do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, so he's not about that superficial shit. He wants his own truth. He wants everything to make sense. So I, I can respect that, right? As a man who wants to make sure that everything fits perfectly and actually makes sense in your head. I, I, I can see that. We're talking about Licht, right? Yes. 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 Yeah, Licht is becoming like one of my favorite characters. Yep. Hey, he, he, the whole... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's the holy trio for me. Vulcan, Joker, and Victor. Boom. Dude, but what about Benny Maru? He's all right. I don't trust those eyes, man. You got that. <laughs> he starts looking at you with those eyes. I'm out, baby. <laughs> Dude, we should, uh, somebody should probably donate a uh, leaked a new cup as well. But, uh, <laughs> that chain. I thought, like, <laughs> chipped yeah. off yeah. the mug. But I thought it was tipped. I was like, all right, well, at least he's going to use the other side. No, he held, he held it exactly that same way. I was like, well, good luck to you, sir. Dude, we'll see how that goes. He doesn't avoid the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the truth is this cup is tasty as fuck bro <laughs> yeah. gotta, gotta get a nibble in every now and then you know he's also he, a super, he doesn't really like uh, I was gonna say he's also a super elite programmer cause he, all he did was just you know try to make it look all fancy when he just popped in a script to check for pi mm-hmm. and he's also just mm-hmm. did some easy some, some simple scripting I assume it's python of all those all those Man, that looks easier data. That looked easier than Python. <laughs> Whatever, Shen. That was C-based, guys. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. Learn, yeah. learn, learn the code. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love C-base. C-base is amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's almost better C-base. than C++. Uh, yep. It's, uh, I don't know. Like, they, they didn't actually go over like why Pi matters, right? They basically said, oh, it's Pi. Okay. Right. Yeah. It, it will. Like they hinted at it because he was trying to figure it out, and then they showed that shot of his coffee mug making a, a circle on the paper right after he mentioned Pi. So I assume it's something to do with like Amaterasu and like where they place each of them. So yeah. like within this circumference, you have to have three Amaterasus, otherwise, blah blah blah. Oh my god, that, can so, make, that actually makes like it could be it. <laughs> could could be. It makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. Eight pillars, eight Amaterasus, eight in Pi shows up eight times. Whoa. Mm-hmm. And, not, and who would have thought that the man that would have actually figured it out was Arthur? Even they though still I don't explain how that works, though. That's what I, bothers me. Yeah, you know? I don't know. I think it's basically, I think they really couldn't really come up, they couldn't come up with anything else. They're like, let's, they're just like, let's just have Arthur say some shit and just move on. <laughs> Dude, they asked that one really bad intern who writes all their jokes. They're like, oh, we need a way to explain this. Oh, 
Arthur. Good job. Good. <laughs> Dude, I really think, okay. I think the only way that would happen is because the main guy that was in charge was sick and they had to get something done there like now. And then they're just then for some reason they're just like pie. So, so you got the janitor. Blame COVID. We're gonna blame COVID for this. No. It could well, be, yeah. the, the, the author wrote this manga way before COVID. That's oh, true. Okay. Yeah. Fucking uh, interns, dude. I, yeah, intern. Definitely yeah. the intern. Yep. I'm actually like I'm like I'm I'm excited to see Joker again as well. Uh seeing like Joker and Benny Morrow like like kinda just like I guess join forces in a sense. At least for this, even though Benny Morrow just went out like normally, like just like just easy against like they're just terrible looking like uh their army, their uh, yeah, man, they're like oh, these are... oh, holy, yes, holy yes. people. All right. Oh, okay, yeah. Too holy for that little spot in the middle of the head. <laughs> hey, it's intentional. <laughs> oh god, yeah, so, yeah. So is this. This is intentional too. But... Dude, they remind me of Ugly Ruses of the Butt Naked Prisoner from One Punch Man. Pretty pretty. You know the guy. Yep, pretty pretty prisoner. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I don't know. He had. Didn't he have more hair? Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, just, you know, <laughs> get rid of everything. <laughs> uh, you lost me, sir. Uh, I don't remember same. this pretty, pretty man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I do remember the man, but I do. Re- oh. But I remember him having hair on his head. He was, he had Very hair well. nowhere else, though. Brian, I'm going to need you to look that up for us, okay? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brian. We need Got it, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say this has probably been the best episode. Uh, really? Okay. For a while. I, right? For a while, yeah. For a while. Yeah. I think story wise, hands down, the best episode. Animation wise, I don't think it was that oh, great. Oh, um, no, dude, they were flexing hard on that water animation, like during the rain and the puddles. That looked nice. It was actually good <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Maybe it's just because I'm tired and it's at night, but it, it, it was it was it was cool. Um, yeah, I definitely thought story wise is the best episode, hands down, because we're actually getting somewhere, and it wasn't filled with really bad jokes or forced humor um victor's character development was on point i think his sense of personal hygiene is quite atrocious and that's a stereotype <laughs> amongst programmers he's worn the same where's waldo shirt he's for just... eight years <laughs> um true it's a, limited, like, it's a limited edition though oh yeah limited to just his closet <laughs> <laughs> um joker I, I always told you guys if joker's in the show is about 10 times more exciting it so is. It's, it's just a lot more intriguing. I like them teaming up. Benny Maru's return and going against the government. I mean, it, it, it's a very typical story in terms of like the government covers everything up and they have to uncover it. But I do like the approach. I'm not going to yeah. lie. So the one thing that kind of actually surprises me, though, is like like this. Aren't they all supposed to be, in a sense, working for the government? But there's so many different teams that don't trust the government. I mean, it's bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. So it's different. Like okay. different okay. departments. Gotcha. Yeah. And I mean, and you look at Benny I mean, Mario, like he's he's seventh, he's technically part of the seventh company, and like I guess I guess he, they're so afraid of him, they let him do whatever he wants. That's how much of a threat he is. He's mm-hmm. too strong. But yet they took him out immediately. Yeah, it doesn't part, make any sense. Like make what sense. happened? Yeah. 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 We'll find so, out. Mean, they yeah. they they planted something on him, and they basically just push a button, and he's out. I want to say the only thing I can think of is like the like the vice captain. He did mention something about he'll be back before breakfast. So I wonder if it's just because he didn't eat yet, and it's kind of like Goku. He's com- he's really hungry, so he just collapsed. Oh my god! <laughs> like, that actually reminds me of One Piece too. Yeah. So yep. maybe that's it, guys. He too just many these, too many of these shows, man. I, I just need the food. I know that's the that's the humor part that we we're complaining about that that like that just didn't make it at the end where, like when Joker is just said lame. I was like, ah, oh, you, you could have done better. You were signing something <laughs> up. You were signing it such a hype moment, and you just, you just ruined it. Well, I mean. It, I'm I'm kind of actually more excited for Joker though because we've seen like a lot of like what Benny Morrow does, but we don't really know what Joker does. Yeah. Besides, like you know, shoot Ash and stuff, and then just beat up on the weaklings. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I really like. Yeah, I like at least for this arc. I like the idea of like, oh, if like the regular Fire Force can't do anything because they're being held back by like the, the Holy Soul, like, um, like the temple, or whatever. <laughs> then like I, I like the idea of having like all the people who hate hate the church so much they're just gonna do whatever they want and just and they're just and they're op as well yeah mm-hmm. i think it's By also way, safe to say that joker is anti-hero as well i'm oh, sorry Sasha, go dark ahead. dark hero sir whatever dark yeah hero. He, he's no yeah i mean that's why i love the anti-heroes because they don't abide by anybody's rules they're out there yeah. for themselves to do their but own i was thing. gonna say I, I love the government's response 
Hmm. So you think there's some uh, lies being told to the entire world? All right, we're gonna have to go through this three-year process. Okay, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> People, are, what the fuck? That sounds like real life. Yep, it is real, is life. real life. Yep. Yeah. Oh god. I mean, Sweet at least trying to be realistic. <laughs> so that was hilarious. I thought that was a nice little knock on real life because that's typically how it goes. They they wipe things under the rug until someone has to say something. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, we kind of did that three years ago. We're sorry about that. <laughs> But I also like how the old guy, the priest, admitted that basically they have a monopoly on the history of the world. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you know, we used to have a lot of religions back then, but uh, now they kind of wink, wink, combined into one. And, uh, you know, we, we get to write the history books. I'm like, oh, God. These Do you guys know are... why I devote myself to my religion every night? Because <laughs> yeah. they would kill me if I don't. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, all the rest of the religions went willingly into the into one. Oh, oh yeah, of course. There was there was no oppression or you know like uh, killings or anything done. Oh no, not just like uh, religious conversions in history, right? Yeah. We oh, just asked yeah, people to join our. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. But guys, come on! If the world like fucking just blew up one day and everything was in flames, I uh, maybe it would give people to unite under one religion. You know, maybe. Are you sure? <laughs> or sure. you just give people to stab each other, and go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Last man standing wins. Go like. Oh, oh fuck! I would but need I'm... that whistle defense buff real bad. <laughs> that he will carry you. But I'm guessing though they're saving the they're probably saving the budget for next episode or the week or the maybe the, even the week after, depending on what happens. Because I think what we're on episode ten, there should be two more, kind of like in the normal midway yeah. point. Yeah. I just, so what it's... I can't. I don't know if it's confirmed or not because I'm, I'm pretty sure like it's gonna keep going on. I don't think they're gonna take a break for the rest. I don't of think they're. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. we'll keep going, which is nice. Yep. Yeah. And yep. like, I was gonna say, I the one, I kind of, I, I did notice how they're trying, they're trying to bring up like, you know, dark hero slash anti hero for Joker because they're trying to contrast that with Shinra because he keeps talking about so much mm. how he wants to be a hero, and then like they're trying, they're trying to show, you know, Joker's trying to do his own thing too, like, because he believes in, to fight for what he believes, so, like, which is fine. I think they should probably show more of that in this arc if they show more Joker. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna nigga. I'm gonna guess like we're probably far enough in that we're that we can probably learn more about Joker. I mean, we kind of got like a we we got like a glimpse of Leak's backstory. I don't really know how much more we would really need before because it sounds and like it's, he a, would, it's like, a glimpse, but it's like I think it it's good enough to for his character because he hasn't he hasn't, he hasn't really done. Oh much, yeah, so. yeah. Well, that that and just like who he is, it basically sounds like he was just doing like a just a normal programmer job for his whole life. Well, it was just like a he's, whatever he's a thing. scientist slash slash engineer <laughs> who uses right. programming in his work. Wow. Okay, all right. Well, so he was doing that for his whole life, and then and then he ends up meeting Joker, and all of a sudden, it's like his life has more meaning, you know? Yeah. True, true. And then I, I would I, like to see. Go ahead. I was just gonna say more interactions between him and Joker, whether they're oh, yeah. past or present. I think that's what the show definitely needs because it's headed that route, and those two, in my book, are the most interesting characters besides Vulcan. He's my boy too. Yeah. But we, I don't think we're gonna get more of Vulcan's we flashbacks. Actually, well, we might we because he was saying this episode, like, because like when like he was saying, like, yeah, I knew it was a lie. Like they didn't mention you know my family at all when about being Amaterasu, and oh, then he, but even he was saying like he doesn't know much about his family history, so he could probably learn more about Vulcan and his family. I guess oh, that could actually be. Well, I don't know. It's I definitely think like this next arc is gonna be a lot more because it's like. You can't have another like <laughs> slash kind of filler arc. Like I feel like this is the only one, and they're gonna definitely jump like more into like yeah, uh, like has, the main. It definitely has the more interesting characters, so I'm more excited. Oh yeah, well, and they already kind of started like you know like a fight with the church now, so it's just like a. Uh, Which is always good. Yeah, I can't mm-hmm. just I, I can't just assume that it's just gonna be resolved in a couple episodes. Like even if they actually take over, they find the scripts and stuff. Like what happens after they find those scripts? Like it's just like once like what's gonna happen like once that they find out that knowledge or like that knowledge gets out in public or something like like how are they gonna react like are, are they gonna and it's they have a lot of stuff they can basically like different like paths they can go afterwards so we'll see yeah I think if they're following <clears throat> the first season's formula they usually have like the first half that shows a dip it's like first two three episodes are great and then it dips. And it picks back up, and then because it has a minor lull, and then the ending's great. I'm expecting the same formula here, where I think this right. arc will be interesting, and then as soon as this is done in three episodes, we're gonna get some pretty uh, questionable episodes, and then finally it'll pick up towards the end. I, I almost 
I don't know, like normally, you know, like normal seasons, they cut off, you know, like after 12 episodes, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. So it's like they can have like, uh, was it two or three more episodes, like technically where like the season would cut off and then we move on to the next. Because usually when that happens, like they end up with like some kind of like epic moments, epic fights, and they set up like the next arc. So I'm assuming like something like that's going to happen. So I would definitely say like, within two, three episodes, like this kind of like uh, fight with like, you know, Benny Maru and Joker should be wrapping up uh, at that point. And then they should be like kind of setting like setting up for like the next like where they go from here, mm-hmm. which is uh which is I don't know, it's it'll be kind of fun to see like what actually what actually happens like if uh and, like how like if the rest of the companies are gonna fight them now or like who's gonna back up who? Yeah, because I don't know how long like the manga is, so I'm hoping we're gonna get to the point where we should get that built up to the finale where like we just keep like raising the stakes and just keep fighting back against the church I, or or Kelly hope... Vangelisu and the rest of the cult. I just hope they actually animate the entire like series of this thing. I hope it doesn't like decide to just cut off like halfway. It's like, like ah, if like, you want to like do... Soul Eater, like other words. <sighs> yeah, like something like that. Because like that, there's so many flags that could happen like, where it could go that way, and oh. it's more of like I I'm, I just wanted to wrap it up. I don't want to I don't want it to be like okay now that we got you here, read the manga to find out what happened. Like Soul here. Eater. Oh. Oh, guys, God. guys, what if right like uh, oh, they do this whole thing with Joker and Benny Maru, and then the church survives. And then say Joker dies. Like, what if Joker dies? And then they wait the three year. There's a three year time skip, and several <laughs> of them are all stronger, and they're finally ready to take on the church, guys. Dude, that would be terrible. Yes. I mean, that would be <laughs> cool. That makes perfect well, sense because that's when the government said they would look at those papers. So right. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> and then Cheryl's gonna be like, "Fuck it, that's not good enough for me. I'm time. It's time to revolt, guys." And then Cheryl like amasses this giant army, and they go in search of One Piece inside the the church. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. If if somehow Joker or Benny Morrow, I don't think Joker would really die die at this point. But if he does, and Benny Morrow, dude, I mean, you gotta somehow recover, man. The like, there's so much more we don't know. Anti heroes usually die, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, oh, see, see. But but go. when they die though, like, don't they usually die like towards like kind of like when it comes to the end though? Because we do, there's so much of the back, Joker's backstory I mean, we don't know. Depending like, on he has how, a lot of armor plot. Depending on how yeah. long running the show is, I don't think it's gonna be this long yeah. running. So I can see him dying. Is the manga still going? It's oh, in the final I arc. Know, so okay, I wonder how close we are though to that point. Yeah, and then also like even though Joker's pretty cool now, and he did just come back, he's never gotten that much airtime. So it wouldn't surprise me if they just kill them off in here. Damn, so you guys I think he's gonna die in here? Do that because I I rather give him the the airtime first before you kill him off. Well, they're giving him airtime. They give him airtime now. We need more. And then and then they're gonna give his backstory in the next episode probably. And then after that, he's going to fight the leader and fail because, you know, it's the leader of the church. He's probably sleeper OP. So hmm. who knows? Hmm. Well, the, well, it depends on who comes, like who like actually like defends the church, because I'm guessing like the like the number one, like the number one captain or whatever his name is, like in the the first one, like, I'm Burns. guessing he burns. Yeah. Does he actually fight for the for the church right now? Do we know where I he don't is? remember if he's oh. like if he's closely like defending or he's like he feels it's an obligation of duty because it seems like he still okay, he feels regret right. towards Shinra and what happened to his mom but I think he still feels like he's obligated to like protect the church so I can, yeah. I, I, I can see him being an enemy later on and especially with the OP too it does showcase him fighting against Joker so maybe this is where it finally happens where, it, it, where he comes in and plus like yeah, that one doctor that. who was with um you know Hajima Industries he was already part of the cult so his whole company could also turn against, against oh, Giovanni. Everyone. Yeah, Giovanni. Yeah, his, his whole company yeah. could also turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's possible. Next episode, so we should be fighting. So we'll see how much actually like like uh, plot we get. Right. Uh, yeah. From next episode, but I'm hyped. Should be good. Yeah, me too. Shout out. Arcs to, off to a strong start. Shout out to the studio for their their water animation. Yes, water and fire. Yes. They both nail. <laughs> There wasn't much fire, water, flowed. much fighting this episode, but just the water was really good. Yeah. Did that water yeah. animation make you wet, David? Yes. <laughs> yes. Really they're, just saving up, they're just saving up the, the, that budget for the, the true fights. Yes. <laughs> How, what Sword Art should have been doing. <laughs> that oh, too. don't even get me started. Yeah. Don't even get me started. Yeah, yeah. Don't, get, don't get me started either. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I haven't even started the show. <laughs> You're not missing, but <laughs> all right. So uh-huh. that's gonna be it for Fire Force. And now we're gonna move on to Re Zero. Um, so I guess now another uh 
cliffhanger. I mean, not a banger of an episode, but still more cliffhangers. Even though this episode, it felt re- kind of weird, just the way that it, 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 like the way that the the loop ended. Because of course, you know, he died again. But like, mm. it seems like when just the fact that how different Amelia was, like, it didn't really make sense to me because it, she should have still been like traumatized from the trial, but she wasn't, and that's. And then a lot of things changed too, like. Well, they did kind of specify that uh, Subaru gives her courage, right? So usually it's kind of rare for her to see him in such a state. So it looks like the only reason why she changes with every instance is the way that Subaru wakes her up. So that's the major difference. And with that being the case, since she has the chance to show her that she's dependable too, that's what caused her to kind of overcome it. So that's why I'm thinking this is the most optimal route because... You know, everything is working out slowly in his favor. Amelia is not, like, shaken or completely broken from waking up from the trial. Garfield is more friendly this time. And uh, he's getting a lot more done, so. Yeah. And, like, the big thing to this episode was um just the, the, the revelation of, um, God, I've the elder. I've already fired her name, damn it. But just the revelation that, like, she's the clone. She's basically getting cloned from the original. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. And like, and when she said like how it was like you know a kid now's experiment, it kind of like mm-hmm. made me more suspicious of kid now because I was already I was feeling more like I was feeling like better towards her as like as maybe like me as a good character. As, but then like this whole th- thing with like the experiment, like oh yeah, wait, you're still doing shady things. So it's maybe a question like what are intentions like? Right in the end, she's still a witch, so she still has that witchy uh, personality, I guess. So. Uh, I mean, like I said, I knew it was too good to be true. I was just kind of waiting to see what the, the twist was going to be, right, for helping out Subaru all this time. Um, so I want to say that once Beatrice kind of gives up the like the spiel about what was going on with that book, uh, that's probably when he's going to see Echidna again. And that's where Echidna's, like, mask is going to, like, like, just get thrown away, and you'll see her true intentions hmm. of what she was doing. That's the only way I can see they're going to end this because they only have like what two episodes left. And we can do a cliffhanger for for part two. Yeah, but they're going to solve something, and I think it's just going to be the the mystery behind Echidna. I think that's just what they're aiming for with this part. Because right now, um, because because we, because you know we kept or you, like because one of your predictions was that we get Garfield coming to help fight against Elsa, but like mm-hmm. it's only Subaru, and he basically made everyone evacuate. And yep. I guess like I guess maybe he get he could get Beatrice and get her out of there too, and maybe they'll avoid Elsa that way. So I don't know. I, um, if, I don't know if they're gonna like just maybe avoid her. Or I, f- I feel like they are gonna like, deal with her in in this arc. Like I can't see them like running away from her. I don't think they're even gonna meet her at this point. It's hmm, interesting because uh, Subaru made it there a lot earlier. Right. And then, I mean, I guess it would depend on like what the big question is. Like, what is it that Beatrice is supposed to reveal to Subaru? Because as of right now, we have no idea. All we know of is that um, Roswell and Beatrice knew of him and of his abilities this whole time. So uh, they already know what's going to happen afterwards. And then Beatrice keeps saying something about how ironic that this is how it turns out to be and how it turns out to be Subaru that causes this to come to an end. So it, they're, they're so vague with it. There's nothing you can really work off of uh, as to what's going to happen. So I, I have no like ideas or guesses of what's going to happen next. Yeah, I don't know. Like, was there anything else important that happened besides just like, um, I guess waking up and uh, getting help with Amelia, oh. and then you basically, oh yeah, he he gave like that. He gave this like the talk to Garfield before he left about something. I I didn't know what the hell what else that was supposed to be about. Like, you mean when uh, Garfield had him held up against a tree? Yeah. And then they they muted what Subaru said to let him go. Yeah. Um, if the only thing I, I could think of is that he probably murmured uh, like the sage's name, the original. I think it was Miyabi. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh yeah so each of the clones they they have their own surname they kind of uh identify themselves from the other clones oh yeah so the, so the only thing i could think of is is how would you know that unless you were an ally of like their whole group so he probably had to murmur her name her her surname for him to for garfield to believe Sir that he was a good guy and then i mean just just the uh just that end conversation they had too where it's like like when garfield was you know, yelling at Subaru, how would you know like what hell is like you have no idea what pain is and then just like <laughs> Subaru's stare and it, just his response is just so cool like it just it's so like like satisfying to hear Subaru say it like i've already been through hell like no one else has to know what it's like i can go through it along yeah. you know, blah, well, blah, blah. like he's saying it sincerely this time instead of being right. selfish like last season so yeah it's just anytime he has this moment where he reveals that he's he has experienced more than anyone else has ever been through it's 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 pretty it's pretty nice like it's it's a pretty nice payoff for subaru since he doesn't really have any powers right so this is all that he can do to kind of like make him seem cool as an mc like in a sense so i thought that was pretty nice um also i did thought it was pretty funny too how um like in the beginning when he was trying to get Satella to kind of uh, follow him and uh, like let him go. He had to tell Satella that, uh, you know, like, you're the last person I ever love. I'd rather pick a kid over you, blah, blah, blah. And that's what shook the ghost, like shook the witch, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, no, there's no way. No, I love you the most. And then she, that's when she she trapped him in that sh uh, that shallow room. And then apparently Kidna knew that was going to happen. So she put like a mist, like a light. I don't know knife, what it is like. Some, somehow, like, Petra's, like, handkerchief, like, turned into something yeah. that he could stab himself with. So. I feel like it's something that Echidna did when she pelt her forehead against it. Maybe. It wasn't really explained well, so. No, it wasn't, no. So, yeah. That's why, I was saying, like, 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 that part, and then also, like, when, like, they had a different, like, outcome with Amelia, like, not being, mm -hmm. like, shaking up, so. I don't yeah, know. No, I mean, with, with Amelia, it, it kind of made sense to me. Um, uh, but yeah, as to why or what Echidna did to the handkerchief, or if that was her at all, um, uh, I'm not sure what that was. And then like the thing, thing of Garfield too, when like it seems like like as Subaru keeps like dying, his scent should get get stronger and stronger. But like mm -hmm. Garfield, I guess he played it off this time. Like, but even though yeah. even though he should probably be really suspicious because he should probably like smell really bad for this for this like loop. Well, it's, it, if I remember correctly, it was also like his actions that caused Garfield to be on guard. Because every time, I, I want to say that every time Garfield was like aggressive against Subaru, like after he came out, was because of what he said or did after he came out. And that's what caused Garfield to be on the offensive. Hmm. But like the past few times, it was kind of like, it's it's whatever, you know, because Subaru didn't really do anything. Even, even when he, uh, even when Garfield saved him from the shadows, he was like, "Yeah, I, I can smell the stench of you, but I don't care. I've already let down everyone else. I'm not gonna like, like, uh, have my pride or reputation be ruined by failing to save you too, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it just depends on the action that Subaru. See, so like everything that's happening, it changes because of Subaru's actions, and I think that's what they're trying to uh, like relay here. So it's like I can't see Subaru die anymore. If, if he does, I think that would be insane because I can't see how much more optimal you can be in in, in this specific route. So." I mean, I still remember like, last season they still died a lot. Like, even even mm -hmm. um the last part of season two, like there's one part where, like, where it sounded like he was about to like they were about to like finish everything, and then he still died, and he's got to redo everything after the white whale. So, oh okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, not not sure, <laughs> not sure what that I guess was about. This time though, like a lot of the, the loops feel less repetitive and re less filler, because it just seems like. Cause I remember even like, especially with um the white whale arc, it just felt like it felt mm -hmm. so repetitive, like him doing something and nothing, everything is like just something bad always happening. Whereas here, I feel like here we're getting more information af mm -hmm. after every loop, so yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like as bad. And of course, it just makes the cliffhangers feel that much worse because like because we're slowly getting information every week, but like it's still not enough to solve the mystery. Yeah, but then also though they did go through the story a lot faster. Like there was more events happening. With this one, they're kind of just stuck to the same route the whole twelve episodes. So that's that's probably why it feels like it's more impactful because you're spending more time on it. But in season one, yeah, they were just constantly doing the same thing over and over. 
but it was only for like four or five episodes and then they moved on to the next arc or the next route you know mm-hmm. so it, it i think it has its pros and cons but with this one yeah other than the cliffhangers like everything has been has been pretty good i think like the payoff has been pretty nice yeah although like i'm seriously having doubts that like where i have a like a huge moment at the end i just feel like it's gonna be another cliffhanger and just gotta take the break and wait till part two in the winter well you have to remember it's still part one so if there's a part one it's yeah, gonna be a like, part two i was two. not expecting this i was not expecting this arc to last this long like i thought or at least everyone would be out of the barrier by end of part one it seems like we're gonna be stuck here right right just the fact that nothing's been accomplished f- for sure i get that but you know hopefully like i mentioned before the payoff is worthwhile and from the looks of it, it looks like they might just knock out a couple of the problems in, in one go. So, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll have we to wait and see. see. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure the payoff is coming and it's, it's going to be, like, like very much worthwhile. All right. Yeah. So, I don't have much to say because it's, it's so hard to talk about the show when, like, we have <laughs> very any information. So, yeah. you're right, sir. It's all right. All right. So I guess that's going to be it for ReZero. We're going to move on to Sword Art Online. Let me just type this in. Oh, nice. Quick. All right. And then. All right. Oh, shit. Oh, about to move that over, move sir. Move it over. Yes. Okay. Sword Art Online. Oh. Sorry. Uh, sorry. It was a sorry podcast. We're still getting like new things. We have new abilities. New We're abilities. evolving slowly. Okay. Um. So I'll say <laughs> the one thing about, like, about this episode, it actually had sci-fi elements of like ai and robots and like trying to like ask you know can robots be human like it it actually did that i think very well in this episode that was the only good thing i'll say that like besides the bicoli fight like this legit like sci-fi element was the only good thing about this otherwise the rest is just sword art see it would have been good but like how it was placed i thought it was just terrible because it's like we just we go through like the whole thing where you know kirito asana is stuck uh, and then they just immediately jump to like the real world, and like, and then Alice is already in like her like AI, you know, because uh, you know, they, they conveniently uh, have uh, a bot robot body that looks just like Alice, ready. Oh to yeah, go. ready. It's been ready all along. And and Kirito and Asuna are st- like I, the entire time I was like, I almost felt like I was like, wait, did I miss an episode? Did they screw up and like you know accidentally like, put like the final episode of the season or something in? Where I had a, like I, I kind of paused for a second. I was just like I had no clue what was happening. And they go back to Kirito, uh, then I'm, and then it just finally—I was, guess it was like slightly making sense. I mean, that whole aspect would have been cool, but it was poorly like put. I don't know, like because it's just like this whole thing where they're trying to like kind of fight against time, even though it seems like it didn't matter. It's because it just seemed like Kirito and Asuna were just out. Like, mm-hmm. do we know how long they were actually out for? Two hundred years. No, 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 no. I mean, not in, like not in that oh, time, really but like okay. actual oh. real time. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. It was not. Specified. It doesn't make any sense because, like, yeah, there was all this, like, because they kept saying, yeah, two hundred years, but it sounded like, like, what, like half an hour or an hour of the real world is like two hundred years. That's why it, was, it sounds so, it sounds so urgent. But then, like, they still they, I think they lock, locked them out, but they still like, I guess, Kito was just in that coma, so. I mean. It, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it may have been like where it's just like the max was only 200 years. Like, what was it? 10, 20 minutes, whatever it was. And then maybe it just stopped after that. And then he just went to like a deep, deep coma sleep, I guess. Uh, I don't know. The whole fuck it, fight it was... still doesn't make sense. Oh, no, definitely not. Like, it was, it was just getting Also, really the bad. part where like they said, oh, hey, delete my 200 memories. Because, you know, memories are something easy that you can just delete. Just like on a oh, yeah, computer you screen. Get rid of Your it. brain. Yeah. Our science has advanced so much in six years that we can just start deleting. <laughs> memory that's right Wait. Wait. hey don't don't doubt their science right they they made they made the original vr so it's oh it's okay. well according to sort of timeline, timeline we should have this vr uh headset two years. in what five five was it only two years oh yeah i think 2022 Wait, really? was, was like the early oh, 2022, oh for some reason yeah. i thought it was 2025 i don't know it's, it's I, think that's came out. I think that's what came out i think i think kito was like the beta player oh and right. then he was stuck in there or he did it a year mm. early and then he was stuck there for two years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's coming. That's all we know. It's a coming. It's and then, working. <laughs> I also wanted to bring up the part too, David. Like I remember when we we're uh, you were you had like those Reddit you had like you had the issues with the Reddit comments where ba- where people were saying like, Oh, Alice doesn't actually like Kirito. It's more like uh, what I don't even know what they said. Like and then Yeah, mutual, well, between mutual respect, respect or platonic, oh, right, 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 yeah. yes, platonic yeah. love. Yeah. 
and then it was confirmed <laughs> this episode. It's been confirmed she's for a talking while. <laughs> I know, but she actually said it though. Yeah. And then that's apparently that's what Reddit people need. Now you should just go back and just see if that guy even exists or if he just logged out. Yeah, like fuck you guy, I told you. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, told you. we all knew this guy's like just denial. This I don't know. It's like so for many, some reason, like the early, uh, like what was it? I forgot, part one, part two, just like the early threads of like people saying like. So many denial deniers like saying like she's not in love with Kirito. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? They should know the SAO that everybody wants Kirito. There's not one person that doesn't want him. This c- even I want Kirito, right? Yeah. Even Klein and Ad- Agile has like you know they have they have some they have Dude, some but they have like dull you could have, have set this feel. You, it should have been set up with Yu-Gi-Oh and Alice the one like non the one pair that doesn't involve Kirito at all and it's still like yes I know Strain that he ends up with with. The childhood version of Alice, <laughs> but still, like, they just made it just so she's still a part, part in, in love with Kirito. More of the harem. Uh, you guys, you have to understand when you're the MC, you get all the ladies. No, even oh, the men. You from get watching all shows. The yes. From watching shows. Yep, I got that down. All the ladies. Uh, what do you guys think about like? Okay, when they made the comments about bandwidth, like, I, I just kind of thought like th- th- these guys are just pulling shit out of their ass. I don't even know. Like, right. I don't remember that part at all. Like, there was a part where he's saying something where he's like, I think he's talking. Uh, oh God, I, I forgot even who he was talking about. How they, they needed like more bandwidth or more like connection or something. I, 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 I can't. I wish I actually wrote down like the entire thing. But I mean, just when going that, when that scientist was talking to Kirito, like the no, no, that was maybe. Hmm. No, I think that was later on. I think maybe or maybe not. I don't remember now. The I thought for some reason it was it was, uh, it was that one. It was a. Uh, the guy that says like uh, that everybody thinks he's dead. I thought he was talking to some. Oh, the the head scientist guy. The IT. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was talking to the IT guy. And they were talking about how like they, oh they're gonna need a bunch of bandwidth with the connection. Anyway, we can pass. I wish I had. I wish I would have remembered more about that. But um, and of course, Kirito is also the first person who lived two hundred years because you know why? Why why wouldn't he be? And then Asuna lived as well, which, which, which I don't know. Like, they're they're always I shouldn't be mad because it's hard art, but a lot. They, they didn't like <laughs> explain. A lot. They didn't explain yeah, like yeah. what happened to her because I guess her, because she was still stuck in there. But I guess she didn't. She didn't. I don't know. She didn't survive it or what? Or I have a feeling she had to go uh, through it. I think it's because she has the goddess account. Maybe she doesn't die, or maybe she's like considered a god or has the, the god account. So maybe she lived the entire time. Oh, that's right. Maybe I just thought of that now, but I have no because yeah. like when uh, you know, like the Kirito is talking, it's like, oh, like our goddess and blah blah. blah. They didn't really even say Asuna; they just said goddess. He said her Majesty because so, they end up being, majesty, they end up being new royalty. And yeah. of course, like you know, they do they do they do all this nice couple stuff with Kirito and Asuna, yeah. and even though like there's still the harm shit going Great on, moment. so it's like, what's the point? Like the author doesn't even believe that Asuna is his wife anymore. Yeah, bro. Oh, when you're done. king, you can do whatever you want, bro. Come on, now. <laughs> come on. Um, I don't know. And then like, it's like the, like the whole thing too. Like when like, it was like recovery when they when uh, Kirito woke up, like it always seemed like this man's like on the verge of death. Asuna was just fine. Like she had, there was no issues. She was able to just get out of bed Again, just fine. Yeah, it's like, like, it's like get up, Kirito. Actually, man up. We went over it, but yeah. Anyway, done. I thought it was um, <clears> funny too. How again you mentioned like Heathcliff again. Gotta go back to season one. He's, I guess his fuck you know, light is alive. I'm somehow. okay with that. He's, I'm he's okay on the run. Right, he's on the run. But really? I'm okay with that. Yeah, really. Even on the, like how they did it. No, because like it, I, it's his, it's his fuck light version, right? So it's gonna be the fuck right. light Kirito meeting up with fuck light Heathcliff. It's just a concept of it's pretty exciting, right? You got Kirito, the the man who survived through all this bullshit. He has two hundred years of life experience with him now, and he's gonna go head to head with. Uh, uh, Akihiko or whatever that scientist was, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that's that's kind of exciting to me because I feel like that has a lot of potential. And if they do go back to Aincrad, like maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the guy he was hiding in the hundredth floor in Aincrad this whole time. Because like everyone knows, they never finished the fucking like hundred <laughs> levels. They only went to full 75 this and that was it. Right? This author, man. And, and they made it even harder too, because it's basically like a, in a gigantic floating castle now. Right, right. Yeah. So so maybe that's the, the next season or whatever everything's gonna go back to Aincrad. this guy basically just constantly loves going he's back to that so first. smart strand yeah i know he loves just going back the one thing dude that's still gonna be so fucking annoying going from here on in the future is poe got away and they, they basically just went away like oh yeah i forgot this, about that this crippled old man or 
crippled man, we'll just say, just got away. They somehow the, like the body just like like these people just flee from a turtle in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. and like nobody can find them. Like they just bail. It's not turtles. Which it's a it's, sea fortress. Whatever. Shaped like a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> you. No, but well, I'll admit though, like this this whole episode. I mean, other than like a few parts that got me excited, like you know, just uh, like with what's gonna happen and what's going on with Alice. Like I thought those were pretty neat, but yeah, like everything else was completely stupid. I I have no idea what they're doing. The pacing is just old, like just off the wall. There's so much information left out that you can't even, even enjoy. Facing right, off you can't the, even enjoy what happened. Arc. It has been. No, but at least it was like somewhat consistent. But they went from that whole like tension of like, oh, Poe's missing, the robot's missing. Like, how the hell is Kirito and Asuna gonna get back with they're gonna, if they're stuck there two hundred plus years? And then they they went from that to this. And was like, oh, everything's okay. Just delete my two hundred years of memory. <laughs> oh, he's the first human ever to survive two hundred years of memories. Oh, we got this AI bot for Alice now. Everything's gonna be all right. You know, blah blah blah. Like now we gotta save Underworld. It's like, where is all this coming from? You know, like. Oh, I, I just don't get it. And there's only one episode left. So how are you gonna like <laughs> how are you gonna be able to like close this? You know? Doesn't Fucking A dude. Doesn't matter, oh, man. The author God. just rolling in the uh, money. Dude. I better see something like in the next week's episode is like uh coming next uh next season, like the final chapter, the final arc of Sword Art Online. See how this all finishes, you know, blah blah blah. That's the only way I'd be satisfied. Like, was it Kirito has such a man crush on Yujo, even after 200 user, years, this man is still crying about him? Yeah, and then they got the scene with like uh, Sugu coming in trying to like comfort him too. Yeah. And I was like, man, you know, something's about to go on too, but I mean, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> do you okay? Do you think, like, in this world, let's say Kirito, Asuna, they're in their mid 30s, maybe you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're 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 laying down for the night, it's like their anniversary, Kirito's birthday, whichever, something like basically, and then let's just say Kirito can't perform. And she's just like okay. she's like she's just like and she's just going like, what, like well, what's wrong? What's wrong? Have him, let me finish. And then all of a sudden you just see Kirito, he just starts like a tear just runs down his face or just like down his eye. And then Asuna's just like, You were thinking about him again, weren't you? And they get in that whole argument. It's like, no, 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 it's all about you, it's all about us today. And then and then he just like stares over in the corner at Yuji's broken sword and just starts crying. Do you think they ever had those fights? No. <laughs> sure. Don, I'm so surprised at like that. Like, <laughs> no, because like they, they make Asuna seem so fine with the harem. Like I know she's good friends with Shinon and all, but like, dude, that's like your rival. And like, dude, no, David, David, no, David. When it's bedtime, it's it's me, and that's it, right? When it's bedtime. But if you think about a dead boy when when it's time for for business, <laughs> no, that that's a big no, no, David. All right? No, I'm just saying, like they like she seems so fine with like everyone going after Kirito, even though they're official, like. Because Asuna knows she like that Kirito just wants the bromance. Mm-hmm. That's what she needs to be afraid of. Some people realize bad. that at the end of the day, like you're going to bed with me, so it's whatever, you know. Like they're just that confident. Asuna just has that confidence, you know. She knows that no matter what happens, you know, Kirito is just teasing them. He'll never fully commit like uh, his <laughs> relationships to them. At the end of the day, like Kirito's coming back to this, you know, to this WAP, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> this... God, look at that! Uh, <laughs> here. <laughs> well, yeah, Dude, I got him. Podcast. I have to. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I, it's, it's agreed, man. It's just you know, there's something about you know with Yujiro, man. That Kirito just can't get over. You know, I mean, the worst part is, is they deleted everything but the two and a half years or whatever that, or no, whatever. They they deleted everything but the time that Kirito spent with Yujiro. Which was like what two um, and a half years? I don't think they actually deleted it though. I think he kind of asked about it, but I don't think he got it done with. Or, 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 no, 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 no. That, that's why he was crying. He took because it they out deleted of everything. Kirito, but the guy he didn't delete. He put it into a storage device. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, like, copy Kirito. Yeah. Right. No. The the reason why why Kirito like was crying at the end, and he even said it too. Like, uh, you know, when they when I asked him to delete my two hundred years of memories, like afterwards, why didn't I ask him to delete the time that I spent with Yujo as well? Like he said that. So the time before the two hundred years, right? They didn't yeah. delete that, so that's why he still remembers Yujiro. That's why he was crying. I was like, man, why couldn't I ask him to delete that too? I can't deal with this. And that's when Suku came in and says, "Hey, you know, why don't you tell me about what happened? Like, why don't you tell him about Yujiro? Talk about you know? the man's story. Yeah, okay. Right. You know, but he's like Yujiro went off basically to what he wanted to do. He got together with his Alice that he wanted to. Like, it's he's like it basically it wrapped it up for him. Even though like mm. Kirito's just like, oh man, I still wish you were here. It's just like. He, like usually would have, I think usually would have been like more depressed just because Alice was gone too. 
Because right. it seemed like, like really, like usually his only focus at that time was just to find Alice. That's really the whole thing. So he found her and went with her. I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't, but, I don't but, like that conclusion at all. I don't. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's whatever. He's not the MC, so. But I think it's safe to confirm also that that uh, that Broccoli's fight was the best, the best. in the season. Yes. Yeah. I already gave it to Brian last week. Yeah. I'll give him it again. Yeah. Like he predicted. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I remember, like, you know, like, still, uh, I think Ku was really the only one still holding hope that, you know, they, they, there's got to be something this I was, episode I don't, that I we was, were going to see. I was thinking, like, okay, like, at least, I don't know. I was thinking something was happening in the final battle. Like, we got nothing. Like, it was to be expected, the expectations. Like, if you're not going to focus, for all we can play about the story and the pacing, it's like, okay, at least show up in the fights. And they couldn't even yep. do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. When it's like, in the opening, when, you, when it's like, you have all this animation budget. And he can't even do yeah. that. Like, what do yeah. people spend their money on these Blu-rays for? It's fucking waifus. I don't know. Hey, that's fine. I'm okay with that too. Um, no, it's uh, like going through the opening. Like I had, I didn't watch the opening forever, and I kind of forgot all about it. Went uh, watched it again this episode, and like the last see- scene is like you know Kirito fighting the seizure creature, seizure demon, mm-hmm. whichever. Like right. almost making it seem like that's gonna be like the you know the 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 final battle, like hype battle, whatever it was supposed to be. And oh man, like uh, that was just such a disappointment. But we we already went that over that many many times. So yeah, I, I, anybody have any ideas or any, any guesses? What's this last episode going to be about? I don't care, man. I never. <laughs> I mean, if if anything, if anything, they did have that one end scene where like Alice felt like she was gonna like just break down because she loves Kirito and she wants to be with him, or she's thinking of him all the time. Uh, so. Kirito? alive now though right right but she's not there with him she's under surveillance with that that orc like rathalos whatever Rath Rath is like the government agency yeah do you you think it made like she meant it more for that or that she wants to go back to her world no Uh, i mean it could be both i think it's kirito Kirito? it could be both Hmm. because uh like kirito also dropped the bomb on her saying that your sister is in a deep sleep and is waiting for you and done yeah so mainly like you know if she's wanting to go back to her world then you know? Right, it could be both. Yeah. Right. I just like, want to I mean, say, uh, I just want to say too how like the explanation, how the whole thing, because the whole thing started with, like they want to do um, like AI to automate weapons and stuff, and it's supposed to be a secret military project. I just want to say like none of this would ever happen in Japan because Japan's so far behind AI development. Like this would be either in the U.S. or China. Like they're the only two that Bro, could, like make this. What are you talking about? Of Japan course, Japan is capable of this. So no, but so behind software development, software development and AI. Like they basically have to like import a bunch of people from China or other countries yeah. to like because yeah, they're so short for, on on AI scientists. For the for the common people, sure, maybe that's the impression that they're giving us. But maybe in their secret labs on oh a God, floating no. turtle fortress, <laughs> they got all this on the works too. In this like, fantasy Era 51, world we that this Japanese like, We don't know what's happening in Era 51, but you know shit's going on over there too, but we don't know what's going on. Just all speculation. So, like, I want to say that they do have something work, it works, but as as like the, the as a common people, there's no way in hell they're going to give us that information. You know, Maybe the time of making this, maybe the Stop. maybe the author thought they were doing better. No. But then again, this, this guy's so <laughs> he's so far away, or he's so like detached from like his own works and just basically like putting just no effort into like researching anything that he does for his work. Mm-hmm. No, there's no secret. Like Japan's uh, tech industry, <laughs> they're more focused on hardware, but they lack in software, and it's, and AI is so reliant on software and data, and so they're missing like. It's like a lot of like, a lot of the big data is either in English or Chinese, so there's no way now this stuff would, like Japan would not be the first one to get AI, man. It'd be US or China. So that's what I'm Bro, just saying. If David, if you knew, would it be a secret? No. So that's why we don't <laughs> okay. know. What are you saying? It's bro? a secret. What are you saying? They're, they're they're building an AI army. Just just but, this, uh, this fantasy Japan land by this Japanese author <laughs> where Japan's I, uh, advanced in AI. I, I still think though that Alice is wanting to go back to her world, um, but what kind of like? Or that's what I, I kind of think like the whole, uh, what, you know, like the whole final like the last comments were. But what kind of twist would it be? Is if uh, if somehow Alice and Kirito get together instead? There's no way in hell that's happening. The only thing I'd see is like the fuck like it, Kirito gang with Alice. No, because Austin's well. not there. So like that's the only other thing happening. Oh yeah, the copy. They only oh, yeah. Con- yeah, they only copied Kirito. Well. They could actually, yeah. Alice goes back and then gets with Kirito. And there you go. Yeah. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I'm not going to do that. If Alice gets together with the real Kirito, 10 out of 10. That's not happening. Just 10 out of 10, man. Just because it's, it's something I would never have expected. I gotta have sex with Even the though, body, though. It's half silicone, half out. metal. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they got it. They, they, were, they were talking about, you know, they're, they'll, they'll be able to have babies and everything else. So it's like, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. This The yeah. creator will come up with some logic. It'll be, it'll be fine. Yeah, um, you know. For yeah. sure, for sure. No, but it's, you know, whatever. I, but I think it's, I think that's going to be kind of like the last episode. And I think we'll get maybe like a couple, like after, like, let's say the ending plays and whatnot, then it'll show some sort of like teaser for like next season setting something or not next season, but setting something up in the story. Yeah. And then it's going to be, it's going to be some stupid po shit or it's going to be uh or it's going to be um a Kayaba. Yeah, no, they left this really open-ended. Uh, I think the main focus is going to be the face off between Kirito and the, uh, uh, Akihiko. Um, yeah. I think so. so I, I'm I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the main focus, and then I swear to God, they better not do this. But I, they gotta solve Poe, right? Poe's still out there, <laughs> and there's always that possibility that yeah, he's coming back. Like Stratton mentioned back. this before, back, and I'm just like, there's no way, right? They ended it perfectly. <laughs> he's a tree. No one's gonna be able to cut him down. He's donezo. And then all of a sudden, everyone can survive 200 years in the AI world, <laughs> and like everything's A-OK. So I don't even know anymore. Logic has completely flown out the window. And no way, not even point that. in this show. Not even, yeah, remember, not even just that. Like He left the turtle. Like, he was able to leave the turtle. Yeah. yeah. So he left the turtle in his terrible, shriveled-up state. And nobody can find him. Nobody, and, oh. no, and, and same thing. You have a broken-down robot, completely disconnected, and you can't find him. Yep. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? It's uh, it's I don't know. It's whatever. Any kind of anything they said. And this is cool praising the secret, the secret uh, like see thing they're doing. The thing they came and do this shit. I don't know. I'm, well, I'm trying yeah. to think if there was a better way, like a better way. Like I'm fine with Kayaba or, or, or uh, whatever the hell that guy's name is. Is it Kayaba? Yeah, yeah Kayaba. I feel like I might yeah. be messing well, up. Yeah, Kayaba's fine. Yeah, Johan, nice uh, <laughs> Thanks, man. Ooh, thanks for the first sub. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, wait, it was like it was that. And then I, I don't know. It's like if it was done by different means. Like let's say if he wasn't like in a robot suit that you know was on the verge of just dying out, then gets away. Like if it was just something else. Like somehow his fluck light got away. Like maybe into the system or something. I don't know. Um, they could have. I, I believe they could have come up with something better. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. At this point, I just don't care about Poe. Poe is like the worst fucking thing possible now. It's it's. I I couldn't believe. Like it's just it's just unbelievable. Like I'm just so done with laughing coffin. Even yeah, though they're gonna... not the author. Yeah, yeah, no. But now when they go back to Ironcrad, you know, Laughing Coffin will rise again, even though deaths are meaningless. Right. Yeah. Know. No. The I, I just gave up on this season. Like the next season is going to be the make or break it, and then I'm just what? hoping that they you gotta they keep continuing it. more after <laughs> all that's yes. happened. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> we need to finish after all that's happened. You want to continue? <laughs> How can the last possible season that they're making be the make or break? <laughs> Because if you go back to the originals and I just forget about like this flamey trash bin that you started, maybe, <laughs> maybe they can salvage it, right? This is the go man back to Icrad. Right. This go is back the to Icrad. said that um, he wait six episodes for Rent a Girlfriend to get better. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. Yeah. And then we're on what? Season six. So I'm way over the six episode mark, sir. Um, but like I said, they, they, they can still salvage this, right? They can still salvage it. Go back to Icrad. Go back to floor 76. Go to floor 100 the right way, find the, the scientists, and figure out how to save Underworld. If they can do that, they'll be fine. It's okay. Sure. But that but that's just me. If I was the author, that's what I would do. But we'll yeah. yeah. Also, that's Yo- all I got. Johan, I appreciate the bits, but I appreciate you need the money more than we do. So <laughs> calm down. <laughs> all right. So that's, I guess that's going to be it for Sword Art. Um, remember when next to Shogugeki, which we all watch at Johan's place. <laughs> it was kind of, uh, oh boy, that was the episode was, uh, I hope you guys are excited for the pie and the fried rice. It was yeah. kind of, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know how to feel about this. I was, I was kind of right, but not really. And I was hoping I wasn't right. It but, wasn't Yakisoba. Uh, it was not Yakisoba. So no 10 out of 10. It's still was, possible though. It was a ton of omelet rices, miniature omelet rices that that caused it to be uh, the best it's dish fried ever rice. Made. Not omelet. Um, I mean, like there's. I guess I assume there's eggs. It's just fried rice. No, no, it's omelet rice. I oh have to be right. Right. Oh I need to be right. <laughs> I'll say that the fried rice makes much more sense to combine everything than the fucking pie. I don't know what the hell that was <laughs> about. Like, what do you? I don't know. 
What do you put in a pie that has like like Chinese and Indian Turkish? That's all it is, man. Is it spices, maybe? I don't spices, know. Spices, yeah. Like Dude, they say. Oh, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, they they flew through both of them so fast. I don't really even like they like had like one word kind of things like how it like was everything together, but it was done so terrible. Um, but it's like I don't. So we we actually also got to see Arena's mom's ability, which apparently just it just creates like a gigantic storm of uh, where people just can't control. Like all clothes are just completely gone, mm-hmm. uh, or or f- almost gone, I guess. I mean, um, basically the same ability as Alice's or uh, Arena's dad. So, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, that's true. But this at like a higher extent, though, or I guess like more intense because it's actually her blood, you know? Right, right. Maybe I don't know. It's it's really tough to tell. Um, it's oh, God. Did, did they show? Did they they showed some more backstory. Um, I guess the whole thing, they ended the cliffhanger on who, you know, they, they haven't announced who won. Mm-hmm. Who do you guys think won? Is that, is, is that a real question? <laughs> Pretty, I mean, I'm going to guess it's going to be Soma, and then it's going to have the Battle of Soma and Arena. At the That's end. when he's going to yeah. confess his love to uh, Arena, and they both win. Right. Like, I'm uh, pretty sure Soma's got in a bag, but if for some reason the dude's got to throw a twist at it, he's going to he's, he's going to make the, uh, the, the one guy win, but yeah. then, like, but the three judges is gonna vote for that uh, that one guy, and then uh, like Alice or everyone's mom is gonna pop out say no, he may have won, but I preferred Solma's dish better. Well, I want him to be. I mean, I can, I can kind of see him go like just have Asahi win, and then like have him face Irina, and then have Irina win, and then she'll be the one that takes care of her mom. So I can see him win that or, way too. Or he could easily just lose to Irina as well, because I I still think. That I, I just get the feeling like Arian is gonna win the whole thing. Uh, I think it's right. I think it's more of a meaning like a meaningful thing for her to you know to actually like cook something for her mom than Soma. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if anything, Soma is gonna be like you know kind of like hyping her up type of thing or you know getting her like in the the whole kind of like mindset of just uh, you know creating some crazy ass dish mm-hmm. uh, to so her mom will actually you know, notice it or approve it, whichever. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely think this arc is actually more. I think Soma's battle is definitely. Uh, oh, what was his name? The guy he's facing right now, Asahi. Yeah, I think like definitely his battle is with him because you know he his he has his dad's knife. Yeah. So I think then then I think then Arina's battle is definitely going to be against her mom, but I think it would have more kind of like an effect because you know she's going to go into it and basically be like, "How can I do this? Like, there's no way." And then Soma's going to talk her through it in a sense, and then I think then she's going to create something that will beat Soma. Mm-hmm. I can even see like I can either I can even see some stupid thing how they somehow tie or something like that as well. Um. That's that's what I that's that's kind of like my predictions I guess from here on out, even though I think we have what two episodes left probably I yeah. think two two or three maybe yeah. I don't know yeah um I think maybe just speed running yes yeah. yeah I know right that's all I mean <sighs> that's, that's all I really got um because we didn't even really have a winner it was basically just kind of it was like the first episode where they actually dragged out uh, dragged something out the entire episode and we didn't see what happened at the end of it yeah reminds true. me of season one. Maybe two. Oh, God. I don't know about that. I don't know. The show is so stupid now. I don't even know, man. You know, it's okay. We're almost done, and then it's you know we can just we can just put it to bed. Just bring just bring Megumi out. Just give Megumi more airtime, man. That's all I care about, dude. <laughs> she was number one seed. So she got no airtime. <laughs> so. Dude, and then like they showcase Soma fighting all the previous uh, elite tenants, and he lost to every single one of them. Like like what David was just saying this whole season. Like Megumi's this, number this one, year's, number one. Seed. Yeah, this year's number ten just sucks, dude. The Big Ten is like nothing compared oh, terrible. to the it's, previous it's ones. Really bad. Yeah, she's what she's uh. tenth seed, elite ten, but she gets number one. But you know, no, it doesn't matter because the author doesn't believe yeah. in her because it's all about right. Soma. Yeah, he's just trying to change things up just to make it like to to throw to throw I, surprises. At I don't us. know. It's just like whatever happened. Like, yeah, like he could have easily got yeah, replaced it for his his food consultant. Like. Mm-hmm. There should be no reason that like this the quality went down this far. Yep. But again, yeah. maybe again, he should probably go back to drawing hentai. <laughs> and, I, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. He has his potential, sir. It seems like that's the thing he's good with. He's good at. So, I mean, he's a guy. So, so, so maybe that's fine. Yeah, that's I understandable. I don't even know what's a guy. I'm assuming it's a guy, but I'm never actually sure. Yeah, it, it probably is. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know. If it's a, if it's a female, that that would surprise me. But I have more faith in actually female female writers than I do males. So right, they wouldn't write this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that and also, I just think they're like way better, like in, in some of its like story elements, they're better at, like, like, like elements. writing relationships. Rom coms are really good too, and, yeah. And like the character designs for the guys are always better because like the the yep. male authors, they always like write the guys so shitty and like either average shitty, or, or, horny. or like, yeah. Yeah, average or ugly looking. Where it's like the female yeah. authors, like they wrote, they they draw like the guys like someone you can actually look up to or someone who's actually cool, yeah. somebody you want to be. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. He was written by a guy who. Yeah, we're talking about rom-coms, though. <laughs> like, it could be a rom-com. Dude, okay. Goku's the worst father figure in anime ever. This and man is the savior of all the universes, all right? Yeah. I don't he's give a, a damn if he's he the also, worst father he's in the world. He's a terrible father. He also <laughs> got everyone involved in that tournament because he, he wanted to fucking fight. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's a different a different time, different topic. All right. Just saying. Is there enough, <laughs> anyone has anything else for Shogeki? Oh God, no! I, feel like uh, I guess we got cut short this week. This yeah, yeah. We don't have much to say, and I was also was I was buzzed when I was watching this. So I don't remember. <laughs> so. That's fair too. We missed not much. That's basically the episode. So, so that's gonna be it for Shogeki. We're gonna move on next to Rent a Girlfriend. Wait, Snafu, man! What about Snafu? Oh, Snafu. I forgot about Snafu. Yeah, yeah, we can go Snafu. I forgot. Okay, Snafu. Okay. Sorry, man. I can just leave it like in this order for the podcast this week. It's fine, because it should have been Snafu before it sort out. What am I? What am I thinking? No worries, sort man. No worries. It's okay. Okay. We, we just we were so hi- we were so amped and hyped about sort art. Yeah, it's understandable. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I guess the only thing we really talk about is just like just the last part where um, Hotch when when they were cleaning up the prom because the prom part didn't matter at all. It's just about cleaning up and then with um the the teacher. So. What? Oh, the, teacher, teacher, the teacher and the, the sister, I guess. Well, 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 not the prom itself, but then the, the interactions that they had during the prom, that, that totally mattered. It was slowly building up the relationships. I mean, that like, I guess the dance with Hachiman and Yui was nice, and then you had the nice interaction with Yukino and Hachiman. Dude, I guess. Still, yeah. man, the ir- dude, Iroha moments. Like, when they're basically doing, like, those, like, little, like, I don't know. It's like when they're doing, like, the whole, like, uh, symbol things, or when. Hachiman's on the ground and Iroha's like up in the thing. They do like yeah, that circle I, thing. I saw like and Iroha's just being Iroha. I saw like the banter between Yukino and Hachiman. And like when Yukino really? says it's like so lame. when like when 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 Yukino says I'm not I'm not used to looking up to you, whatever. And then oh, yeah. says like oh yeah, people are used to looking down on me. So I and, love I love and, those yeah. banters. Hachiman's like yeah, I'm fine with it. I don't know, like still Iroha, like That's... basically Iroha and Hachiman back, like uh, back like, and forth like, are my favorite. I like that back and forth more, where where Iroha is just like Hachiman just ignores her, basically. Like I didn't feel no, anything no. from the man at all. Wait, well, they had like somewhat of a serious conversation up in the up in the stands, which I thought was really good. Hmm. Dude, the first moment, actually, I, I don't, I don't know if this was my first moment actually tearing up in the show. Probably not. I probably teared up a few more, hmm. but I actually rec- like uh, like realized it's like, oh man, I'm tearing up. When Hachiman was like out there, kind of like on, like before even on the dance floor, when he was actually like, reaching out to like to Yui, basically you know offering for like for the dance, I was like, oh man, this guy's grown up so much. Like before, you know, like okay. normally, like normally, like me, I'd be sitting in the corner, just like basically like, you know, face to the wall or the or like the corner of the the corner of the room. And this man's just like out there trying, like actually talking to people, like yeah. setting things up, like actually going out to Wait, dance. He was just, he was just behind the scenes. Years. Yeah, he was just behind the scenes the whole time. He was, but he went he went dancing with Yui though. Yeah, at the end, the last part, and you just. And you just know, man, it's it's gotta be the final like nice scene because I just feel like the next episode is gonna be like, it's gonna be like the uh, like the the heartbreaker uh, for Yui. Well, for whatever, yeah, basically whatever the hell Hachiman decides. Because I, I don't know, because it's like I still feel like I mean I think everybody still assumes at this point it's going to be Yuki. No, like there's no way they can it's really change Yuki, that. No. Yeah, like because there's a lot of other things too. Because you know when Yui mentions those moments, where you just know what's going to happen. And there was like just a few things where we, you know, like a few episodes back, where like, oh god, it's just gonna be a basic ending where, they're they're, where it's like the whole thing where he's get to Yui, you know, gets with Yui or, or one of those things, and it's be like, no, this isn't what you want, and then you know, ends up with Yukino. But they kind of keep going back and forth where somehow, okay, so I got over hating Yukino's mom. I fucking hate her sister now. Like, why does she give a shit about like these relationships? Why? Get the fuck out. But the same thing I was saying about her mom. Just get the fuck See, out okay, of her life. That part I can agree with you, Stren. Like because. Like the mom, like like I thought you were making such a big deal about the mom because like it's like PT, PTO stuff, like yeah, like that's, that's always a big thing. That's a big thing here too, like parents getting involved with their kids stuff. But I yeah, will agree. I got with, over that. 
I will agree with the sister yeah. because it's so weird that like she's like you know a college student and she's still like hanging out with these high schoolers and even though it's her sister's friend and all like it's just yeah it's like why okay it's, it's like why do you care <laughs> about whether whether or not they kind of go about like just being friends well like why, like... That, that one part too where she was like saying you know all my life i felt like i felt like my life was a sham so i can't I, but i can't really tell if, like fault. she like if she is trying to stop you you know from being as sad as she is or she's like jealous that you you know didn't get all the pressure or what like i i'm kind of I have no idea what's going on with the character. Like, I mean, I, I feel like you guys are looking at her at too negative of a light. Uh, yes. I want to say, <laughs> like, I just don't understand just where she's out. coming from. That's a thing. No, I want I want to just throw it out there, but I feel like whenever she looks at Yukino, maybe she went through that that same that same phase, right? And then at the very end, because she had to follow like their parents' footsteps to kind of take over the the business, everything kind of fell apart. Nothing was genuine, and that's what she really wanted. Something that was genuine. But or, yeah, she had or she had her own Hachiman. That right, nothing, but it, it went, right. It didn't go in a way that she that would would have been beneficial to her, and she doesn't want Yukino to go through the same thing. So she wants to make sure that whatever they're going to, it's truly genuine. It's going to work, and Yukino won't have to deal with the same things that uh, Haruno had to go through with. But there's another side of that too. Like ever, okay. So I lo- love the conversations that Hachiman and the teacher have so much more than anybody else. Because mm-hmm. it feels like the teacher just breaks shit down like realistically, where it's more of like it's your choice, like basically, like you know, you do your thing, and right. the other person's like, no, nah, no, nah, you have to do these things, and it's just like, and it and it just feels like, um, because like the whole thing with like the teacher base, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll drive you home, and they go to like some batting range, and then they talk where mm-hmm. they talk afterwards. But I thought like again, that's just hilarious. It's a, another like uh, my two favorite or my two favorite characters in the, the moments that they have, and um, and where she's basically where you know, she was like saying about the whole thing where she's not like pressuring, kind of like. Yukino's sister, where she's saying, like, oh, you gotta, like, make these decisions, do these things like that. And, like, the teacher almost makes it sound like you decide, you know, like, you do your thing. Like, it, you know, like it's like, like, you can choose. Which, at the same time, I feel like the teacher is kind of coming at it, like, where it's just, like, like, it's okay to basically kind of stay as friends, or, you know, do your thing, like, you know, why pressure it, or whatever. And mm-hmm. then you have the teachers, or then you have the, then the sister, who's just like, no, you need to make a decision now, even though it's gonna break everything else that's currently, ha- like, happening right now. Um, and so it's just it's again it, it's like the the author's like making it like seem like there's like there's a chance of something else happening which there's really not but now it's like instead of like the girls kind of like running away or and, you know figuring it out it's basically Hachiman running away yeah. when like, there basically was the like, whole thing where they were like it basically looked like it was like you know like the decision time and then you know Iroha broke the ice and <laughs> fucking Hachiman just, took just, off just he just he's like I'm out get out of there <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know like. Normally, I would say like, like what a badass, but then it's like, dude, you can't do that, man. You gotta like face, yeah, face. Yeah, he, he really should. Yeah, that was that's kind of that a moment. Like the but then Yukino, yeah. but then Yukino ran after him. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that part was, was more like, sad. But like when he's trying to take off Yukino's fingers off his jacket, oh sad. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I, was, I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that would be the turning point, right? But dude, Hakuman just just finger by finger just yep. dude, <laughs> removed her hand, and I was so heartbroken, dude. Were you really? Oh, I thought I was, that was kind of funny. Funny. Yeah, he's just like he's just like one finger, two fingers. Like yeah, see it. Because it was like it was so obvious that she wanted him to stay, but then you know he had to fulfill her wish the to face, make man. you happy. Right, she the was giving the face, face dude. The pouty face. That he face. was giving the face so many times too. But no, no this is from Yukino though. Like I felt so hard for her when she got just left alone like that. And then after he walked away, she just stood there just looking at the guy. I was like, man. Oh. I think he leaves her just go to her fucking oh, sister oh, too. That's that's the oh, worst oh. part. Just to talk yeah. to the sister. <laughs> God, I know. Again, what like, it's just like where she gets called out by her by her sister for the reason that basically what Hachiman was, was about to do, and like you know, right there was like basically like the the whole decision making time or whatever was about to happen. I mean, was but, he really though? Was was he really? Probably not. I don't know. It, yeah. it, I'm, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it was just an excuse to get out. Right, right. Um, but I don't know. Like whatever happens, man, I'm still gonna be just just destroyed. Yeah, and then like to the point with the the fact that you enjoy his conversations with the teacher better than Haruno, I I think that's fine. But again, I, I think it's you guys aren't giving her enough credit. It's two different you know? points, though. Right, two it's different point of views. Yeah. And then, like I said, maybe she's gone through something similar, and then the teacher hasn't, right? And yeah. especially with the fact that like her younger sister is involved, she wants to make sure that doesn't happen. If, if she's really as sincere and caring for Yukino as she says she is, like I'm sure she doesn't want to go through the same thing. And then, you know, she doesn't have as much life experience as uh, the, the teacher did. 
to kind of have more broader like view of things so this is more i guess more bias or maybe it's not as from a yeah. more mature point of view but, but, but remember though she she actually wanted to like she did she basically helped out because she wanted like these type of results that like she was telling right. about that was like yeah. really her only like, kind of like reason why like to really help it wasn't just because you know the good of her own heart it was basically just because or maybe it was maybe it was maybe. but we right. don't know it's so it's like that which sucks like if, if that if that, it's that, that part of like the story it sucks for us because we don't know that right um and so it's like i can see it possibly i mean it's like I'm hoping like once this is actually all you know said and done, like when we actually have like our um real like, review episode of like the, the whole thing entirely, I feel like we're just gonna talk about like the ending and just like certain parts that like Reddit said about mm. like what happened in the light novel that wasn't shown in the anime. So I just feel like this part this portion is gonna be so long uh for like the the future podcast. So I don't know. I'm still gonna just kind of wait and hold just to see what happens, like how they wrap how do they how they decide to wrap this up. Oh yeah. Um, sure. So but it's like I'm pretty sure like you know, if, if if Hachiman ends up with Yui, I'll be just absolutely shocked. Even more so if it's somehow Iraha. But I would actually not be <laughs> so shocked if it if they somehow just end like kind of like where at least like the end of this like this season or whatever they they just they're basically all three of them just like friends. Nothing oh, happens oh from God, there. No. But then, but wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but then they do go kind of like a future kind of gap thing in the future where he's like with Yukino or something. I can see okay. that even. Like, no, even. open ended. I'm so sick of this in anime. Like this is the finale. It needs to end. Or unless unless they do something like Orisuki, but we'll see. Oh my god. If they do something like Orisuki, I'd be okay with that. Hachiman just gets the balls. I don't know. That would, I would be uh but again, I how this season is, I I don't mind. I don't I'm not, I'll, I'll do the whole rating thing later on. But right. But I no, no, I, I totally see that. So, but yeah, right? like they like David said, they have to have some kind of closure. If they just leave it open and like that, oh, it would be I, the I, biggest blue balls <laughs> like you'll ever have. To, like, I still what? think I still think next episode is basically is the decision. Uh, I and then I think then the last episode is basically wrapping everything up because this is the end. So I think um, there's only two episodes left. I'm pretty sure. Something. We're heading there. So yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna cry. I don't we'll see. We'll I'm see. gonna cry. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this week's part of Snafu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um we're moving next to Rent a Girlfriend. Oh man, our, our favorite MC. He's actually so oh, no, he's bad. He's himself. trash. No, 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 no. no, no. no. He's, no, he's no, somewhat no, no. redeemed himself this one. How so? Because he lets, uh, like, to back up uh, Kiba or whatever, um, he actually made Chizuru go out on a date with him as a rental oh, girlfriend. Curry. Yeah, Curry. And then the fact that he, like, spelled out his secret with him just to kind of make it even, I thought that was kind of a nice bro move. You I know? mean, that's, like, the minimum, like... The right, but, what a lot of work. We're, we're, we're we're how bad our... he is, though. But it's, it's, I don't want it's Laura going in the right that direction. <laughs> no, it's we going were... in the right direction. So he's doing I, the well, minimum as a friend. I wouldn't really say it's going the direct the right direction. I would say it's 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 currently stopped from the direction it was going, <laughs> but it yeah, hasn't it, moved. <laughs> it, it bounced a little, you know. Just, no, just no, a little it, bit. it just stopped, and then it's just it hasn't decided where to go yet. It's going to be up the next episode. Yeah. Uh, but yeah i don't know i'm trying to remember like a lot of like the convert like just the inner, inner monologues that this man has in his head i just i can't stand it anymore like, i can't stand this guy's thoughts how he even thinks about stuff it made mm. it a little bit kind of like more realistic because uh dude, even his this guy like i feel i feel more for this guy than i do the mc right like I, I don't know i just feel so like i feel way worse for this guy i feel like i feel worse for everybody else or like everybody else more than the mc right which is terrible right um it's just i don't know it's his, I mean, his plan. His plan, in a sense, made sense. Like, it, you know, it made sense. Uh, I mean, I'll give it you know, props for that. But the whole thing, he's still, he's still uh, treating. Um, uh, oh God, I'm blanking on her name. She's real. Uh, no, 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 not she's real. The, the other girl. Ruka. Yeah, she, he's still treating her like trash in a sense. Yeah. Where it's like, if you're, like, you're supposed to be going through like the whole motions of like, you know, like, oh, you know, we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Like, it's more of like you both should be kind of acting like how you would need in a normal relationship. You shouldn't be like avoiding the person. Right. It's just like we're. It's just not like a really fair shot. Even though at the same time it was just like, really, did you have to get a job with him in the same exact location? That mm -hmm. might. That's that's a little overkill. That's what I'm like. Ah, uh, like I mean, just because you're around the person more doesn't mean you're going to win or you mm -hmm. give a better shot of winning. If anything, mm -hmm. it can hinder that or whole, like hurt. Them. It's just it's just dumb. Like this whole thing is dumb because it's a plot device by the author. Like he should have just really like even like all the stuff about the red flags with Ruka being clingy 
Like, yeah. it doesn't matter because, like, he's using her as an excuse. Or he, I don't know, like, just basically, like, everything's an excuse just so that he can't get with Chizuru. Even though... Dude, the one thing I... Th- oh, sorry, go ahead. Or, or, I mean, or just, like, like, like even though it, he sh- should end up with Ruka, like, it should solve all his problems. He's just using the fact that he's in love with Chizuru just to, like, drag this out. Yeah. They're they're both above him, like, <laughs> so it's just like whatever. If he has like this whole connection with his grandma, or maybe even in, in, in like in this, in this sense, like it's just already uh, where it's just an excuse in a sense, just to you know stay in contact with Chizuru, Chizuru, but we don't know. Um, the one part that I thought was just really stupid is when he was thinking of a ways to actually cheer like his friend up. And he's like, oh, I, I'm sure like me showing up with a girlfriend isn't like gonna work or isn't gonna be like the best thing. But at the same time, I kept thinking like, okay, when he means girlfriend, does he mean Chizuru? Or does he mean Ruka? Because if he showed up with Ruka, like that would have been way worse. <laughs> because it's like, oh yeah, you remember your rented girlfriend? Oh yeah, I, I went with her now. And then, um, it, like, so that that whole kind of like thing was really dumb. But I also gave him props, though, his friend for when he basically called out. I was like, man, you're like, you're like, uh, you're like your thoughts are basically like, like, like wanting your grandma's approval. It's like, it's like, it's stupid at the amount of like where it's at. Where it's like, why, like, why the hell are you even doing this? But then he like in his inner monologue, he was talking about how. It's you know it's probably an excuse because he actually likes Chizuru, which would make sense. But yeah. at the same time, it's just, I don't know. It's and then uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like we're I like was... we're getting like, yeah. It's it's I don't know. I think you just overthink it, Shen. Probably I'm probably thinking I'm giving, I'm thinking way too much about this crap. And then I also like how we're, when Chizuru shows up, it's like oh I'm Chizuru, and he just immediately Google's her, and then she's right there. I'm like I'm thinking like couldn't they figure this shit out easily? Like if uh, the Ali, like it just seems like anybody would have to type in her name in Google for any interest, and bam, she's there at the top of the rent a girlfriend list now. Or and then it's, and then it's just uh, where I feel like then they could it would be like another one of those where his so called plot devices that would be just destroyed immediately. Yeah, and when which, that's why we and then they, on, that's why I shot in this show. Yeah, and they brought it up so easy and casually. I'm like, wait. Yeah, that's why wait, we're. Sh- that's why again, Stren, you're overthinking this. That's why we're shitting on the show. I know. I know. I gotta calm down. Oh, it's. I don't know. I don't know. It's because I again, we don't watch it for the MC. We watch it for the for the wives. Indeed. Got it. Yeah. I don't want to say. Like, I don't, oh, go ahead, Koo. I, I got through all my notes. <laughs> well, the thing that also bothered me was the fact that they brought back mommy. It's. And even then, uh, uh, when they brought her back up, it seems as though, like, I thought she was, like, a thing in the past. But it looks like she's coming back in the story now, and he's still trying to make it work somehow. And now they're introducing uh, this new chick as well, the new renter girlfriend that he's going to help out with the next episode. I don't know. I just wish they would just completely, like, drop Mommy and just focus on this new chick. Because there's only, like, two episodes left. So I can only imagine that with the introduction of this new girl, I like think, it's just gonna be chaos everywhere. I think it's just because it's a manga. Like sh- mommy will probably come back later in the manga. So like right. I don't think they were playing like they're not planning to do anything mommy in the anime. It's just it's because they'll probably do whatever do whatever with the new girl and then like it just goes further in the manga. So I'm I don't know. Pre- I saw the I saw the preview and then there's a lot of like shots oh, of her. I didn't mommy, watch so. I didn't watch mommy the preview, so Oh yeah, it's gonna be heavy, mommy. It's okay, gonna be mommy well, and the new girl, I think. So mind, yeah, man. but yeah, uh, there's two episodes sick. left. Yep, two episodes left. Uh, yeah, but mommy, like the, the whole mommy thing. I I just think everything is just pointless because Dude, it just like, seems like he's over her now. It's been because like in the show, like yeah, it's been like what because because their school starts in April. It's already like, like, December, it's Christmas. Months. So it's been like six yeah, months. Been months since all this yeah. like stuff happened. Yeah, and she's just falling off the face of the planet. So I, unless she's just getting growing like psychotic even more so, and talking to herself on Twitter. Oh and yeah, then, baby. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden she has like a different personality where she's just like that stalker type, you know, like possibly um, you know murder you or like if you walk around the corner or something. Unless well, she gets like need, those type of vibes. We do need a yonder, eh? so maybe that's where she do comes we, in now. Do we really? Hey, well, it, we we need to fit all the <laughs> stereotypes here, so maybe everything's got to be full, and is uh, they got to fill in all the spots for everybody. The prophecy must be fulfilled. Yep. Sir. Yep. The laws of harm. You have to have everyone. You have to have one of each. Mm-hmm. I got nothing else. The next episode is gonna be all about mommy and the new girl. But I'm actually kind of excited to see the new girl though, because it's been we have two episodes left, and we get to see the fourth chick that we've been seeing all season long in the, through the openings. The only thing I want to say endings. is like I don't know. They try to make this episode sound like. It's supposed to be like about their friendship, but it's like, man, I really don't care about these two and their friendship. It just seems so like I know they're college students. I know they're like nineteen year olds, but it just seems so dumb how like how 
of course, Kazuya just had to like he felt so pressured to lie. Cause that that that's that's his, that's his own problem. He had to lie about like having Chizu as a girlfriend and show up in front of his friends, and then the other guy, of course, had to like feel I don't know, but he felt like so insecure about like Kazuya all people getting like a hot girlfriend like Chizu. Like I don't know, like it just seems so dumb. Like I guess I still feel like. I'm of a strand that I feel more bad for, for Curry, but at the same time, it's like, it's just dumb. Like, I yeah. don't care that, like, you, you guys are so insecure about yourself, about showing off girlfriends to each other that you had to rent the girlfriend. Like, right, that's true. I don't know. I guess, yeah, it's supposed to, these. I guess it's supposed to appeal to the audience then, like, the people who you watch who are supposed to enjoy this. Like, it's not for normal people. So. Hey, maybe this is what uh, you know Japanese students go through, you know, on a daily basis nowadays. No, it's just, it's just the. I mean, how small how would we know, David? Audience. We're not a Japanese student currently. How would we know? Okay. I got nothing else. Okay, well, we'll just end there for rent a girlfriend, <laughs> um, and then open the floor. I guess whatever you want to say about Yuzaki John Ku. Uh, well, this episode, I think they had a sellout episode because it was all about Totori or whatever that place is called. Oh, Totori. The, it's a prefecture. It's a prefecture in Japan where there's like sand dunes. So people go there to like hang glide or do the parachute thing, par- parachute gliding, whatever. Oh, I don't know. In this episode, uh, they're basically just talking about all the different tourist attraction sites that you can uh, like see when you're there. Apparently, there's a big airport there that's dedicated to Conan, like uh, <laughs> like a detective show. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, of course, there's some interactions with like Ozaki and uh, the other guy, and then of course the the two sidekicks comes along, trying to hook them up with each other. They were there too, but yeah, it was just a complete sellout episode uh, or like tourist attraction episode. It's I don't know. Um, so yeah, place. there wasn't really much going on, right, of, just, of that place. It just fell out of place for you. Yeah, so I was just like, yeah, that's whatever. I had it on in the background. Like after five or ten minutes, I was just like, yeah, this this isn't <laughs> this isn't a regular Uzaki show. This isn't what I'm here for, man. I'm just so sad. Ah, <sighs> but yeah, that's all I got. All right, just just sadness. All right, well, I guess we'll just end it there. Of course, Strain had to leave at the worst moment when we're about to be finished. But whatever, we'll we'll finish without them. Um, hey man, well, you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, it's okay. So, I'll just like thank the audience for listening to us today. Thanks, thanks to Johan. You're our first sub, you're our to our number one fan. Most thank you, loyal sir. follower right now. Yep, first sub, first bit donation, too. So, thanks. I want to thank the panel for joining me. I guess it's just cool right now. <laughs> you are most welcome. Shen fucking left us. We'll have Sasha. Sasha, well, thanks, Sasha, for his area constitution for Fire Force as well. So thanks, Sasha. And that'll be it for the podcast this week. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.